raise your hand. Please. Confirm the testimony being in this hearing. The truth told you that that's what the truth says you got. Please be seated. May I proceed? Thank you. Um, good morning, uh, Representative Green. I'm Andy Shelley. I represent the plaintiffs in this matter. Um, Ms. Green, you were elected to Congress in November of 2020, right? Yes. And you became a member of Congress on January 3rd, 2021. Is that correct? Yes. And when you became a member of Congress, you became a member of Congress by virtue of having taken an oath of office, right? I became a member of Congress by being elected by the people of the 14th District. Okay, but you actually were permitted to take your seat in the House of Representatives because you took an oath of office. Isn't that correct? I swore an oath on January 3rd. And that oath required you to swear that you would support and defend the Constitution of the United States, right? Yes. And it required you to swear an oath that you would support and defend the Constitution of the United States mm -hmm. against all enemies. Right? Yes. And part of the oath that you took um, says that you were going to undertake that obligation to defend the Constitution against all enemies freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Do you recall that part? I think so. Okay, well, let, let's have a look at it. This will be uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 63. I just want to make sure you get a chance to see it. Mm -hmm. Is the excerpt from the congressional record? Um, no, Your Honor. This is um, which one? This is Exhibit PX sixty three. Okay. This is uh, a federal statute, um, five USC three 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 one, which sets forth the oath of office for federal officers, including members of Congress. Okay. Um, and Ms. Wells, if you could make that a little bit bigger, I want to make sure the representative can see it. The highlighted portion, please. So, if you see about. A third of the way, two thirds of the way down, it says that I will I will take this obligation. I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. See that? Mm -hmm. and, and you now recall that was part of the oath, right? Yes. And and what did that mean to you, uh, Congresswoman Green? About taking it freely without reservation? Yes. It it means I'm swearing the oath and I have no reservation. Great. Now, one part of the Constitution, Representative Green, is the Twelfth Amendment, right? Yes. You're familiar with the Twelfth Amendment? Yes. That's the one that provides for the constitutional process for counting electoral votes in a presidential election, right? Your Honor, I, I object. Uh, under the speech and debate clause, she cannot be questioned about what she does on the floor of Congress pursuant to her legislative responsibility. And I don't intend to ask any question of that sort, Your Honor. I just want to under have her understanding of the Constitution. This is a case about Representative Green's state of mind, including her understanding of the oath and the Constitution. Then I further object, because this case is not about her state of mind, is whether or not she engaged in insurrection or rebellion, engaged I, I, I in those conduct. I concur. And as so, a rep, so sustained. Next question. Uh, Ms. Green, if somebody tried to unlawfully interfere with the process of counting the electoral votes, unlawfully, that person would be an enemy of the Constitution. Wouldn't you agree? Does it define that way? Is it defined that well, way? Well, I'm asking for your understanding. If somebody broke the law, in a way designed to interfere with the process of counting the electoral count college votes, that person would be an enemy of the Constitution. You mean interrupting Congress, is that what you're referring to? Doing anything unlawfully to interfere with the process of counting the electoral votes. Interrupting Congress, like when the Democrats interrupted Congress and had a sit-in on the House floor and stopped Congress? Excuse me. Excuse me. Could you rephrase your I'm, question? I, I'm entitled to ask my questions in the way I'd like to ask them, Your Honor. I, I ask that you listen to my question and simply respond. May I, may I proceed? Yes. So if someone broke the law in an effort to interfere with the counting of the electoral votes, that person would be an enemy of the Constitution. Am I right about that? 
breaking the law is unlawful. There's been over 700 people charged uh, for the, what happened on January 6th. Right, and those people were trying to interfere with the lawful process of counting the votes for the Electoral College, right? I, I, I would assume, yes, they, they did. They stopped okay. the electoral count, yes. Right, and so those people would be enemies of the Constitution. You would agree with that, right? I don't know if it, I don't know. I don't know if it defines it that way. Well, having taken the oath that we saw on the screen, if you were aware that someone was going to lawfully, unlawfully, excuse me, unlawfully interfere with the constitutional process of counting the electoral votes, you'd be obliged by your oath to try to stop them, uh, right? Your Honor, I, I, I object. Uh, the, the, cl the claim is not she violated her oath. The claim is under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. Uh, and so her, her opinion on words like enemies are words of art often in, in the law. Uh, is just irrelevant to uh, to the matter, to whether or not she engaged, did, did a direct and uh, uh, overt act uh, of insurrection. Your Honor, we, we, we had a one-hour presentation on the law from Mr. Bob. We did not object to that. I will let you answer the question. I forgot what it is. Can, can we ask for it to be right back? Question. If you were aware that somebody was going to unlawfully interfere with the constitutional process of counting electoral votes, you would be obliged to have them arrested or stopped, right? You may answer. You may answer the question to the best of your ability. I had no knowledge of any attempt. And so that's a question that I can't answer. Well, I'm... I can't answer that question. I, I, I take your representation that you had no knowledge for the, for the time being. I'm asking it as a hypothetical question, just to understand I your, can't answer a hypothetical question. Well, I'm, I'm permitted to ask you one. So I'm going to ask you again. If you had knowledge in advance that someone was going to unlawfully interfere with the counting of the electoral votes in a presidential election, under your oath, You'd be obliged to do something to stop that, right? I, I object. She's not being charged for violating her oath. There is no pro foundation laid that she had any knowledge about anything like that. We'll, we'll come and, to that. And so these sustained. Sustain. Let me try it a different way on the screen. You remember the part in the oath where you talked about taking on the obligations of the oath freely and without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. You recall that from a few minutes ago, right? Yes. Okay. If you knew that people were planning to interfere with the constitutional process of counting the electoral votes, you knew that before you took the oath, and you took the oath anyway, and decided not to do anything about those plans, that would be a mental reservation. Don't I you agree? I object. She is not. She is not being charged with violating the oath. The question is: Did she engage in insurrection or rebellion? Her state of mind is relevant, Your Honor. We think it's very important to have it's her understanding. What, Mr. Chair? It's relevant to whether she engaged in insurrection during the time period from January 3rd to January 6th. Well, we're going to be talking about her state of mind we, all day. You may come back to that question after you have laid a foundation for why it ties into her, her activities from and after the Fair enough. The Fair enough, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Green, you're familiar with social media, right?